and welcome everyone. We're going to be talking about uh, lunar phases and these are going to be opportunities for growth. It's um, a topic that I as an astrologer have been working with for a long time and then I put my different hats on at different times uh, connected with um, looking at uh, things that one can let's say look into the stars or calculate with your ephemerises or look at online astrology uh, programs and then you can you know find out where the moon happens to be uh, calculate your own chart your own horoscope um, and then also uh, the other hat that I wear is uh, working with um, altered states I've been a, a hypnotherapist for many years and uh, have specialized in reincarnation past lives and also a very interesting thing the life between lives that was made famous by um, Dr. Michael Newton and I have been working with those for also many decades now putting them together in several books on the topic but this one here is looking at um, astrological phases timings and then once we really get uh, an idea about um, what what can can possibly be and then unite that which is above with our own inner desires here below then we can perhaps mesh these things so that at the right time then um, we can let's say move forward with our plans our goals our desires recognizing that there are some things that we would like to let's say release let go of and other things that we would like to bring into our lives so um, yes the uh, the new moon you see the image right here that's actually of a um, um, solar eclipse where the moon exactly goes over the face of the sun and I really enjoy this uh, photo also uh, especially because um, it shows the corona and just about one year exactly um, in early 2020 we had a, um, a series of uh, eclipses and then we had a alignment of planets specifically um, Saturn and Pluto as the big heavies there again in uh, January and we'll, we'll see that, that that is being touched off again right now because the Sun happens to be in just about the same exact place as it was a year ago January which um, to me and many other astrologers really pointed towards a very large cycle connected now with what we know as the Corona virus the COVID-19 and again here is a picture of a Corona there in that um, solar eclipse interesting coincidence um, with that but again it's not only pointing towards the pandemic but also towards a larger phases in uh, economics and government and so forth and bottom line that's not the point why we're actually getting here together today but I just wanted to emphasize that as above so below there's bigger energies going on and if we let's say understand them use them work with them even kind of surf on top of the wave of the energy then we can move ourselves in directions that we would like to go I wanted to um, also point out towards um, another very interesting and an exciting thing uh, that uh, a lot of astrologers are paying attention to and uh, that was the winter solstice here in 2020 just a couple of weeks ago and um, everyone probably knows of course that um, the solstices whether in the summer or in the winter solstice they're always very significant always very important this particular one had a rare alignment of Jupiter and Saturn in it in the very first degree of Aquarius and although the Jupiter and Saturn conjunct every 20 years and they represent larger economic and social dynamics that will kind of set the tone for that 20-year period it has just begun it is just starting 
what is making this especially interesting is that uh, it is part of a huge um, 200 year cycle. And we've I'll, I'll bring up the elements in just a second here. But basically, for the last 200 years, whenever Jupiter and Saturn aligned or conjuncted together, they were in Earth signs, except for a kind of an overlap time here in 1980, when it was also another air sign. And so, um, yeah, for the last 200 years, you know, all those things connected with Earth oriented economic and social dynamics, which represents, again, long period phases of working with the earth, mining the earth, bringing out oil and other precious gems and, and so forth, molding them in the earthy oriented sort of way that creates all our, our great stuff that we have, stuff that, you know, is part of the materials in the, uh, the software that you have, the rooms that you have, your bedrooms and so forth, um, your offices, it is all there from the material phase of 200 years that has just come to an end. Now, just now, just two weeks ago, it has now gone into an air sign, Aquarius, and that is the theme for the next 20 years. But as I said, it's going to move on over to the next 200 years that whenever Jupiter and Saturn align together, it will be in an air sign. And air, just as we found with that um, little uh, example, little, ha, um, from 1980 to 2000, that was, that was um, another period of time when it was in the Libra air sign. And um, air air about ideas information the world wide web came during that time as well as improvements in in um, uh, computers and look where we are today look at all look what we have right here you know, fabulous being able to communicate with each other from so far away um, many other uh, innovations uh, rights and it was also during that time during an air time of making up our minds about new things and how we're going to interact with each other um, the Soviet Union fell and many new nations came from that time during that time coming up with their own constitutions and their own le legal ways of dealing with how are they going to uh, be uh, interacting there as new independent states so very exciting here. And I say all this because for the next 200 years, we, we are again going to stay in this air sign perspective of ideas, thoughts, let's figure things out for ourselves. Um, and um, I expect some more interesting and exciting innovations in technology. Um, also groupings of people, humanitarian types of uh, uh, goals um, and uh, really striving for more idealism and uh, working together uh, in these units. And in our experience right here, right now, is a, an example of a classic Aquarian gathering where like-minded people with a, a particular interest, this one here happens to be lunar phases, astrology, you know, looking at um, cycles uh, that we can perhaps use, um, is just an, an example of all the different types of, of groups, groupings, um, things that unite people that uh, they wish to understand. So that's a bit of the background here on what's going and what's happening or what can happen. Hope you can all see that. And here we have a, a lovely image here uh, over a 28 day period and where the moon uh, happens to be a snapshot at a particular time in the sky. And notice it's, a, it's a, a, a lovely, wonderful dance that the moon and the earth has. And uh, here we have the uh, beginnings from a uh, new moon that, by the way, is going to be within 12 hours of now, which is why I chose this time to, to uh, get together. A new moon going over to a quarter moon to a full moon, back to a three-quarter moon, back to uh, a new moon. 
the all of the cycle here 28 days 28 29 days and that is a month a month coming from the word moon and um, so yes what can happen within just one month um, many things or nothing but but I feel that when we really understand the power of the moment the power of an alignment uh, when we're kind of more in sync with that and we have our own personal desires our own goals to uh, improve to do things on our, on our own to uh, whether that be personal financial professional health wise uh, whatever your goals happens to be yeah use the power of the lunar dynamics and not only lunar, but I'll be talking about a couple of other interesting alignments here coming up here too. And um, it's uh, something that we can use and use wisely. The planets are above, and then we have our memories within. So the alignments are having a, a specific kind of energy they have a flavor i talked about just recently just a year ago that saturn pluto dynamic that turned into a pandemic and a worldwide economic crisis yeah it was just right there and an astrologer can look at that and make some predictions about that you know even before it happens but uh, even the smaller ones like this one month cycle here and what flavor does it have and in just a second i'll show you what it will look like and then we'll take a look at what can you do with these phases these energies here but yeah i have to warn you first this is what we're getting into it might crack op open the cosmic egg So the background here, understanding, you know, your own chart, the larger cycles, and of course, we're all familiar with the more solar cycles or sun sign uh, alignments where the sun goes into. Here you see this uh, image of the zodiac, you know, starting over here on the top left here, the Aries sign going into Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, etc. But those four here talks about the elements starting with the aries which is a fire element and then taurus the earth gemini the air and cancer the water element and after that then they start again and they go through those very same elements fire earth air and water three times around the zodiac and that tells a, a particular dynamic and i had talked about that already when we look at the big picture with the air energy the Gemini the Libra the Aquarius all air signs air elements and that brings us into social interactions discussions communications sh short range trips and aligning with people with ideals and um, uh, like-mindedness when you are going to be using these lunar cycles for yourself then yeah have your chart ready and hopefully you do and we, you can uh, look along with this um, I have uploaded a couple of um, things connected with the signs as well as with the meanings of the uh, houses and you can always uh, contact me specifically and I will send you these two so that you can have them download them print them and use them whenever you wish okay so we're going to be using now um, the signs the houses recognizing that we're specifically working now with the uh, uh, lunar phases and we're coming up very soon within 12 hours of a new phase a, a beginning phase when the Sun and the moon again ends their cycle coming then together and then it is beginnings it is initiating it is the start 
uh, very much like we had the uh, start, you know, with the uh, winter solstice or the Capricorn solstice here recently, and it starts this new phase. Um, every month we have yet another opportunity to begin again. And we can uh, look back and, and say, oh, I wish I would have done this. I could have done that. Oh, I wasted my time. Well, when you work with the cycles, then it you'll find it a lot easier and it doesn't have to be like so much willpower. It's just like paying attention to the right time and making your uh, focus times uh, to move forward, to use the energies for your own benefit. And that brings us in here to horoscopes. And um, um, I'm wondering if I can make this a little bit larger to see so everybody can see itself. And so this here is a horoscope um, calculated here uh, in 12 hours for the um, new moon coming. And it's very interesting. I'm over here in uh, Virginia Beach and this is one second into the new day on the 13th. One second. You can see that top left. Zero hours, zero minutes, one second. I, uh, what an interesting thing that is. I always pay attention, of course, to signs, unusual sorts of things and say, hmm, is there a meaning uh, with that or about that? Anyway, here we have an example. And um, every month, of course, there's going to be a, another new moon and one can make this horoscope. And then you compare it with your own horoscope to find out what is activated. Here you see that at the bottom, well, first of all, I, I don't know how much you all know. So let me do a real quick kind of um, overview here of any horoscope. You see the circle here on the left hand side of the circle. That is the rising sign or the ascendant. And then at the very top, that of course is where let's say if the sun were noon time, that's where it would be that you would see the sun right up there. But the, since this is exactly opposite, you'll see a circle with a square in the middle, and that is the Earth. The sun is exactly opposite because it's midnight, you know, and uh, that's why the sun is down below. So that line going right through the middle from the ascendant over there in Libra all the way over to the descendant in Aries opposite, that is the horizon line that we can see that I can especially see over here when I go out to the ocean and it's just a nice big long flat thing and so everything above that line is that which we can see in the sky everything below that line we can't see because it's under the surface it's below the horizon and that is what this particular chart shows right there right now this evening um, again at midnight uh, however, you will see over on the right hand side over here, the um, Mars and Uranus over there in the seventh house. And uh, Mars is pretty easy to, to see and I've been watching it, you know, the whole winter time. Uh, always that kind of like that orangish, ruddy kind of colored uh, planet up there in the sky. Well, here, uh, midnight it'll be, you know, starting to set. It'll be closer towards setting over in the west. But right next to it will be the planet Uranus. Those two getting together, by the way, is very volatile this month of January 2021. So be on the look for that. But as I said, we're looking at now lunar alignments and phases. And at the bottom, in the fourth house, of this chart, you'll see that the um, moon and sun are there at 23 degrees Capricorn. And that was exactly the degree of that big heavy alignment a year ago that kind of set the tone for our COVID emergencies as well as economic um, difficulties for many people. But, you know, again, some people thrived in that. Some people have made a lot of money in 2020. And so that's the idea also about using these lunar phases for yourself. Yeah, you can surf them. You can work with them, work with these energies. I also have you um, uh, pay attention here also in the fourth house, that really interesting alignment of Jupiter and Saturn. You can see there also in early Aquarius, 
they're slowly moving out of there but we have a couple of other planets in Aquarius and I use sometimes a few um, asteroids uh, that in particular they're close to uh, Mercury is Pallas Athena which I find very useful I feel that uh, the asteroids are associated with Virgo by the way so there is a, a horoscope that's the specific horoscope of the upcoming new moon coming and now let's take an, an imaginary person here is uh, someone uh, with the fictitious name of uh, Kamala Harris and um, so again as an example using your own chart and how uh, the uh, lunar phases are in shown up in your charts and in your life with uh, uh, Kamala here you'll see that um, she has got a Gemini rising over on the left hand side her son is over in the fifth house in Libra and she was born during a full moon opposite the Sun over there in the 11th house pretty much exact is that full moon in Aries and um, so uh, over the years uh, she has flip-flopped uh, back and forth because it's a full moon energy on one side we've got the Libra on the other side we have the Aries on one side uh, compromise and discussions and and being um, reasonable and um, uh, discussing things one-on-one -on -one with people and then on the other side when the Aries uh, energy then she's been a maverick she's been often doing her own things and being a pioneer and indeed what a pioneer she is right now she is you know set to be the vice president of the United States the first woman ever in this country to hold that uh, position and so yeah how about that a power person right there one can go into other details about her chart I don't want to do that right now I just wanted to um, bring up the fact that you too can be working with your charts with these new and full moons so let the music play let's see what we can do when we start putting some of these different things together and um, uh, I will be uh, taking a look at this general idea that there is the music of the spheres a very ancient idea that as the planets move in the sky you know they too have their songs and if we attune to them whether that be truly literally you know musically oriented sorts of inspirations from Mercury or Venus or Mars or in this case the moon uh, but also they outside of music it can be also inspirations for um, homework for uh, home improvement projects for writing for cooking for uh, gardening I mean the far farmers almanac for centuries has been telling us the right time to plant the right time to reap and that's part of the divine music that we can work with so when we put things together now uh, here we have um, in the on the inside circle this is Kamala's chart and on the outside was that earlier um, uh, new moon chart that I had shown you before since it now follows uh, her Gemini rising that uh, alignment of um, Sun and moon in Capricorn is now found in Kamala's eighth house in fact her eighth house through this particular alignment and this um, new moon phase is very powerful and so um, the eighth house is activated here very strongly in her chart and it begins then uh, coming up here um, tomorrow uh, and, and, and really activating her eighth house when they actually do come together starting this one month long dynamic there and then after the Capricorn alignment then one month after that the moon will continue to go into the next sign which will be Aquarius and then Pisces and then Aries and that's true for everybody that's true for what's going on and again something that you can use for yourself on in this example 
uh, here is the eighth house activated. And interestingly enough, uh, this whole topic is a classic eighth house uh, energy because uh, it's mysteries, the unknown, the occult, um, calculating, uh, sensing energies. I mean, it's, the eighth house is classically very mysterious and uh, interested in the unseen dynamics going on around. What might that have to do with Kamala, except that there are conspiracies out there that she has to deal with. Uh, unseen energies, uh, perhaps some threats. Um, uh, I'll, I'll bet also that, you know, especially since Saturn and Pluto are right there, I bet she's um, getting extra security right now. Uh, the CIA and her own security guard um, it's a dangerous time for her, for the United States, and it, it, it would be something that I would say, you know, watch out here. Um, obviously, that would be true for uh, Joe Biden and some other folks, but yeah, those are some of the different things. Uh, one could also say that if this were your chart and your eighth house were activated like this, it would be a wonderful time also for, on, on one side, uh, dream incubation, um, dream work, symbols, symbology, but on the other side, on the earthy side, then in getting yourself involved in kind of complex financial dynamics, reviewing your insurance uh, programs, finding out if you should invest in something. Um, there's a lot of people looking at the investments, of course, right now in this new phase. Positively using the cycles. I've been talking about the uh, building blocks of these uh, dynamics of these cycles. Uh, where would it be in your chart? Uh, which house, which sign, this particular one coming up, coming up within 11 hours uh, will be, of course, in Capricorn, late Capricorn, 23 degrees. And then what would that touch off with you? What, what does that represent for you? Uh, as far as which house. And so uh, one can get it very specifically with your astrology chart. However, you don't, you don't even have to look at your chart to work with the planetary cycles, with the lunar cycles. You just would need to have it in your heart. What would you like to initiate? What would you like to begin tomorrow? Those who are really focused upon the, let's say, exact times and the power times, it's exactly over here on the on the East Coast, USA, it is um, exactly midnight. And perhaps one can do rituals, ceremonies, prayers, um, conscious thinking about, about what it is you would like to uh, initiate and to move into the next phase, and uh, writing things down. Sometimes, again, in a ceremonial manner, you can write down those things that you would like to say, you know, in this new phase, I'm going to let go of the old. I'm going to say, like, you know, this particular bad habit, this thing that doesn't work for me anymore, write that down, you know, put that into the fire. Boom. At this time of newness, at this time of initiating things, out it goes. Using the cycles, using the energies. I uh, now would have you um, take a look at uh, a, uh, an opportunity here for you to uh, tune in. But before we do that, I would like to have you think about hmm, what is it that you would like to initiate and you can uh, sense that this is an energy for yourself that you can like surf on, that you can work with, that you can move to with. You can see this image here of the children here at the playground, the circles, the circles, and we too can can work with the circles. Um, what would what would be, let's say, something that you would like to work on in the next month, recognizing that it has to be something reasonable, okay? Um, like uh, like on a uh, exercise routine, for instance, um, to get involved in a good routine. As compared with, I'm going to I'm going to lose you know 50 pounds, 25 kilos in one month. 
No, I don't think you're going to do that. Okay. However, you can get started on a good healthy routine with diet, nutrition, exercise, walking, nature, things like that. So again, reasonably focusing upon using the cycle and specifically here, even though I said you can use anything you want, you can, you know, choose whatever particular thing that you'd like to have. Um, yeah. Very good, you know, to become more organized. You know, that is really good because that's a classic Capricorn thing. Um, as an earth sign, Capricorn uh, wants to, yeah, be organized to um, have a, a larger plan. And um, that on an inner level uh, represents uh, how we uh, can, let's say, organize things ourselves. And that could be... Um, uh, an ideal that you would have. So, thinking about now your particular issues, your dynamic, that which you are uh, wishing to have, that which you would like to have, then I'd like to now offer this um, four and a half minute um, meditation. There will be a visual aspect of it. But I would have you then actually pay attention to how this can work off. You can close your eyes, get yourself into a comfortable position. And let's think about, yeah, in this new phase, just ready to start. Um, with your goal in mind, I'm going to offer this um, four and a half minute meditation. And this is where I use my astrologer's hat and my hypnosis hat. And let's bring this here together and uh, work with something very interesting and useful. As I say, get yourself together. It's a visual, but you can close your eyes. And so, preparing nice and comfortable. Taking a deep breath. We too are connected. We too have our roots and our webs, our inspirational connections with all other living things. And as you breathe, find your peace, find that quiet place within. Mother Nature calls us to remember we are her children. We are here upon the earth. As you walk upon a beautiful path, perhaps in a garden or in a meadow, a path, walking along that path. Notice the colors, open up other senses, the smells, the air, the freshness. And in this path, in front of you, with the next deep breath, an opening, perhaps a light, maybe a friend, a guide. Rejoice and feel not only centered, but inspired. Breathing that in, I'm going to be quiet for a minute and commune, receive the inspiration and attune.
breathing. Feeling yourself again as part of nature. You have received some inspiration, perhaps a message, perhaps a symbol. And we take that with thanks. And then we find ourselves moving back upon the path, the path that leads to here and now. Taking your time, no rush. Bringing the wisdom, the inspiration, nature and spirit working here, right here and now. And coming back, coming back. And with the next breath, I welcome you into the presence. Very good. So um, again, something that uh, one can um, work with. <clears throat> That's just an example of um, working with a, a meditative um, component and using that, contemplate uh, working with that during the power times of a lunar new phase. You can also expand it as it grows, as it waxes, as it, as it moves towards a uh, full moon. And then that full moon, of course, is the culmination, is a, a greater development of the different things that we can plant in the new moon phase. And uh, that is an expansion. And when you do that, then yeah, uh, start start working with such things. Um, with working with the, uh, the trance work, in combination with, let's say, ceremonies, rituals, journaling, um, the various things that you can do to basically kind of like focus your mind, focus your attention, focus your desire and your energy to accomplish the various things. Again, whether that be financial goals, um, uh, professional uh, habits, um, health, uh, positive routines, um, getting beyond the procrastination that so many people seems to get um, bogged down in. Yeah, working with those uh, special energies as inspiration. And certainly when you include that with being out in nature and using the glory of spirit that can be found in natural settings, then uh, that's when really quite magical things can happen. Basically, I'm talking about being your own shaman. I have an extra uh, a focus here uh, called the watch hit. And uh, this is something that I have um, uh, developed. Uh, and it's something that I will show you the download thing. But right now it's on Android options. Uh, it's, by the way, also in the German language too, um, Calvin. So um, you just get onto an Android, type in watch hit, watch it, and um, yeah, start using it on your, um, uh, your phone. And basically it is working with left brain and right brain clocks or thinking or, or timing. And what we classically see, of course, when we look at any clock, any watch, um, is yeah, what time it is you know, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock. That keeps us, of course, to, to be more organized and to uh, align with the things that are time uh, sensitive, such as meeting for this particular class right here, right now at noon uh, until one o'clock. That's really great, of course, for the left brain approach towards watch and clocks and so forth. Well, I have also then developed the right brain dynamic of using symbolic time and the you know the lunar phases and so forth is just a larger example of that but I have built it into a, um, a watch uh, app as well as there is a website I'll show you in just a second and yeah 
take a look at it, download it, and let me know what you think about it. I'll give you a little bit more information about that here uh, very soon. But um, yeah, symbolic time and what we can do with that. I'm going to um, expand this. And um, again, just to um, uh, help you to get an idea about this with the Watch It Time for the Bright Brain, um, here you'll find the website. It's my website, um, www.transpersonal.us, and then the Oracle. And you'll see that it's also in the English and German language. And then um, it'll show you also about downloading that. I hope within less than a week that uh, an Apple version will also be available and looking forward to that. I'll, I've been uh, putting again a lot of my hypnotic ideas into uh, books and, and so forth. But before um, uh, we, we uh, take a look at that, I wanted to also point towards besides the um, lunar uh, phases we have got you know coming up very soon and I hope that you pay attention to uh, a couple of these uh, different things going on um, other celestial events and aids recognizing that we could passively for instance you know like a couple of weeks ago just look up into the sky and it was a fabulous uh, vision there in the west seeing Jupiter and Saturn so close together and great you know I was out there with my camera and I, I took some photos too and when one can just look at that just with an objective perspective but recognizing also that there's these greater energies going on with this and we have this new time every month with the lunar cycles to p play with to uh, work with energies well, there are other energies besides these that have just been mentioned. This month of um, January 2021, it's the midpoint of kind of a three-month dynamic, so December, January, February, of the slow-moving planet Neptune that's making a square aspect here to the lunar nodes. Whenever the Sun gets closer to the lunar nodes, that's when we have eclipses and eclipse phases. And that's when, of course, the exact alignment of the sun, earth, moon, right in a line. And that is uh, when the eclipse happens. But these nodes also symbolically represent the um, uh, society, where is society going? What is society in general doing? And I'm talking not, not just about, you know, the American society, the German society, but anywhere in the world. Neptune, the planet of ideals, of inspiration, of possibilities, of movies, of memories, of photography, of visuals. Uh, Neptune it can be so soft and inspiring it, like the great muse but it can also be like lost in the possibilities in the imagination and so then we have deception and what is truth and we've been dealing a lot with fake news uh two different realities or more so this particular january as i said is when the neptune makes a square then to the nodes so really societies plural many societies many nations have really are being confronted with what are our ideals what do we believe is true are we being deceived and um, various things associated to that um, eyes open pay attention to what's going on and you'll also recognize in the news that there's a lot more people either waking up or saying wow i have to adjust you know things uh, if they're getting out of hand then very soon um, this coming weekend uh, Jupiter uh, still in Aquarius is squaring Uranus which is in Taurus and um, this again is can be high idealism 
And I mention all of these things because I'd like you too to work with these, to enjoy the, these energies, to uh, recognize that there are these greater powers, these opportunities for you to tune in. And, and personally, I love to go out there in nature and feel it to walk and think and sometimes you know in our modern world you can go out there with your recording device which is oftentimes now just connected to your phone and if you get some high inspired ideals uh, that are especially strong during certain times yeah write them down record them um, use use the energies here above now Jupiter is expansive it is positive, benevolent. Um, it wishes the best for things. It's got the big picture in mind. And then a square is kind of a bit of a conflict because it is having a discussion, as it were, maybe an argument at times with the planet Uranus in the another fixed sign of Taurus. And although that is going to be exact here, the 17th, uh, you can say that Right now, as we speak, you know, they're close enough here for a square and then for the following week. So we're in kind of like this Jupiter square Uranus phase right now. And Uranus is about ideals, freedom, uh, personal choices, um, uh, wanting to, let's say, be the captains of our own ships, wanting to choose for ourselves what we want to do or what we don't want to do. All of that there is connected to Uranus. Jupiter squaring that, you know, that is probably giving Uranus a lecture, something like, um, yes, yes, you can have your own ideals. You can like make your own personal choices, you know, and, and you should have the freedom to do so. However, we have to think of the big picture. What about, you know, um, other people that might be exposed to you, let's say, in a classic mask dynamic when people should be wearing masks and but that's infringing upon one's personal freedom and uh, but if we Jupiter says yeah well okay but you have to think about the bigger picture and then as soon as this pandemic is over then we're all going to have a lot more freedom and we're going to be doing a lot more of what we would each and every person would like to do so it'll go something like that and again It'll all kind of like fit into, you know, who you are and how you wish to uh, work with that dynamic, uh, if at all. So uh, then I would like to also have you pay attention uh, to the early morning, February 10th. And I'll be talking about this also in my next class two weeks from now on the full moon. But on the, um, the 10th of February, over in the east where the sun rises get it get up before the dawn take a look in the sky and there is a lineup of planets just prior to another new moon uh, but very powerful lineup that visually will be quite spectacular to take a look at we're, we're hoping for some clear skies uh, but also uh, an, an aquarian focus uh, to really kind of uh, feel like what are my ideals what would i like to have not only for me for my family for my community for my nation and um, yeah think big and imagine great again have your uh, pad and pen nearby or a recording device um, not only to take uh, pictures of this wonderful alignment of planets uh, but also you know how are you aligned how are you inspired and then write down some of those different things. So that's just a real quick view of uh, some of the different things to uh, that will will come. And uh, so th that is the news as seen from Stephen Poplin. And I, I invite you to uh, contact me about other programs as well as sessions and readings that I do both with uh, hypnosis as well as astrology. And um, yes, um, that is now the overview. That is a perspective here that I offer to you to understand how things fit here in general, how they can fit into your chart, your sign, your house. And then, yeah, when, when you focus upon 
uh, that which you would like to have, remembering that the new moons, this one coming up here just tomorrow, a great time to initiate things. Just to say, yeah, today I'm going to start my exercise program, my, my, my positive eating habits, you know, prior to that, you know, which is right now, you know, just what has to go, what, what needs to leave, what, what is not working, you know, in my life so that tomorrow, new moon, you can say, what do I want? What do I wish to have, you know, to build up in my life? And then two weeks after that, you will be coming towards the full moon. And that is the culmination of what you have been doing for the last two weeks from the new moon and where has it brought you and what are the lessons what are the the things that needs to be changed you know because you were a little bit off off of center or you weren't really right on your goal and so the full moon will certainly show you if you're on the right path or not or the benefits or even like the sense of freedom that will come uh, during those powerful full moons. So I invite you again to uh, come to that program two weeks from now. In the meantime, um, that's the big picture. That's the presentation. Thanks for being here. You're welcome. Um, use those things. As I said, uh, you can contact me there at my email. Take a look at my, uh, my websites. You can also download uh, that um, uh, four and a half minute uh, meditation and um, as an mp3 that's uh, found on the, my stephen-poplin.com uh, site and um, use it as you wish i also have on that very same site i've got uh, two free 30 minute long uh, journeys reveries that will that you can again go inside and re-attune and recharge yeah thanks for giving that out uh, calvin Good. All right. Then uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. Um, uh, for those here in the United States, uh, it's going to be a wild ride for a couple of weeks. Uh, it's strange times indeed, but many astrologers are not so surprised about that. So stay in tuned with that. Hope to, to uh, stay in contact with you and hope to see you uh, in two weeks when I do the full moon version of this. Okay. Thanks.